the European Union is divided. The European Union has failed to take a strong stance against China. And now, European Union member states are going their own way. Despite China's hold on the European Union, some sort of an alliance against Beijing is taking shape in the West. Now, 18 Western lawmakers have formed the Inter-Parliamentary Alliance on China, a coalition to adopt a tougher stance on the Chinese Communist Party. The 18 high-profile lawmakers from US, Germany, UK, Japan, Australia, Canada, Sweden, Norway and members of the European Parliament are critical of China. There is a member representing Germany, Michael Brand, who is interestingly the human rights spokesperson of German Chancellor Angela Merkel's party. This coalition is therefore in stark contradiction to the European Union's official stance that happens to tilt towards Beijing. Nine lawmaking bodies, including the European Parliament, are represented in this anti-China bloc and US lawmakers, Senators Robert Menendez and Marco Rubio, who are dedicated China hawks, are also part of this newly formed coalition. Rubio said, How we respond to the People's Republic of China and the Communist Party's attempt to reshape the globe is the defining foreign policy question of our time. The coalition is going to focus on five areas as part of China-centric policy making. Safeguarding international rules-based order, upholding human rights, promoting trade fairness, developing complementary security strategies and protecting national sovereignty and integrity. With members from European Union countries and the European Parliament joining the anti-China coalition, prominent members of the organization have sent a stern message to the Union that they disapprove of its close ties with China and will go at it alone if the EU doesn't take leadership now. At a time when China is facing backlash around the world, it had found an ally in the European Union, which used to go soft on China every now and then. First, the European Union officials watered down a report that criticized China for its disinformation campaign. Then it allowed the Chinese state media to censor a friendship letter co-authored and co-signed by all European Union ambassadors to China to remove references of the coronavirus outbreak. The European Union then drafted a resolution regarding the handling of the COVID-19 pandemic in the 73rd World Health Assembly. Australia too backed it, but the EU again supported the dragon by not mentioning China or Wuhan in the entire draft. The European Union has no clear-cut China policy and it is also a divided bloc, which allows China to exploit the situation. European Union's Foreign Affairs Chief Josep Borrell himself agrees that the EU has been naive about China. He even said, developing a joint European Union approach to superpowers is never easy, as each member state has its own viewpoints and sensitivities, and added, the China case is no exception. What's more, China is not shy about sometimes playing on these differences. The European Union is naive and divided, and its officials stand with China, but the European continent does not stand with China. The EU officials might continue supporting China, but individual Union members have stood up to Chinese aggression time and again. Sweden, a prominent EU member, for example, has been at loggerheads with Beijing and the Chinese ambassador to Sweden, has been openly offensive like any other Chinese diplomat, issuing threats and using extremely aggressive language. France and China also share a good deal of acrimony, as the Chinese embassy in France has been ridiculing the country's response to COVID-19 pandemic by spreading rumors and speculations. They have also sparred over France's defense deal with Taiwan. Germany might have shied away from criticizing China, but the fact remains that Germany, along with Italy and Spain, was one of the first European countries to tighten its FDI norms in order to avoid a hostile Chinese takeover. Within Germany, there is an anti-China sentiment even though the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, might be seen as playing into the hands of Beijing. The anti-China sentiment is high in Merkel's party. Czech Republic too has been involved in a feud with China, with the Czech Prime Minister even demanding that the Chinese ambassador be replaced after the latter wrote a threatening letter to Czech authorities. The European Union has failed to stand up for the cause of European countries, therefore they are taking a stand for themselves. 
This is also the reason why EU members within the group of seven vis-a-vis -vis Italy, Germany and France did not object when Trump decided to expand the G7, inviting India, Australia, Russia and South Korea to the same. China was not included in the expansion on purpose. The expanded G7 is clearly anti-China, yet Germany, France and Italy did not object. They also didn't object when the UK proposed D10, an alliance of democratic countries to take on Chinese tech giant Huawei's 5G technology. Thus, many EU members are clear in their approach, that is, they will reject the European Union's weak leadership and stand up against China.